How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Gianluca. I'm a first year Canadian medical student and today is May 10th, which means that it is officially MCAT season. Now I wrote the MCAT almost about two years ago now and I scored a 517. Now in the past I've made videos talking about the car section and also I made a video talking about my study schedule and how I believe everyone should study if they want a great score on the MCAT. But today I'm going to make a direct continuation of that video talking about the physical and chemical foundations of biological systems or basically exactly how I study for the chemistry and physics section of the MCAT. Now what I want this video to be is first of all a guide for those of you that might need a little bit of help and how exactly I went about studying. Um, and the other thing too is I want to throw in five quick tips at the very end of the video talking about some easy ways that you can bring up your score in this section uh, right away. I'm also going to link some free practice resources in the description below so go ahead and check those out for yourself. And guys one more thing before we get started. Recently I reached out to a few MCAT prep companies trying to do things like get discount codes for students that are studying or get some some free books trying to help whoever I can out uh, because I know the prepping for the MCAT could be very expensive sometimes. So if you want to help me out in trying to contact these companies, go ahead, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, show them that we got really an awesome community going on here, uh, and now let's get started. So just to start off with a quick overview, the chemical and physical foundations of biological systems is the very first section that you're going to be writing on the MCAT. Now normally this section is going to have 59 questions, but if you're writing in the summer of 2020, it's going to have 48 questions. Now the questions that you're going to see are going to be made of 30% of the questions are going to be from general chem, 25% of the questions are going to be from physics, 15% of the questions are going to be from organic chemistry, 25% uh, of the questions are going to be from biochemistry, and then the remaining 5% of the questions are going to be from biology. Now personally, when I wrote the MCAT, the physics and chemistry section right at the beginning was probably the hardest, and the reason was was because I hadn't taken some of these courses in years. But thankfully, a good study plan and a way to tackle this really goes a long way for this section. So when I started studying, my main explanation was that the first thing I would do was read the chapters start to finish and take handwritten notes on what I thought to be the most important details for me to remember. Then I would go back over my handwritten notes with a highlighter, highlight everything, and make sure that what I had written was actually now stuck in inside my head. And then finally, the last thing that I would do was answer the questions at the end of the chapter to make sure that I actually understood and was able to apply the concepts that I just read. As accessories to this main plan though, I also did things like make flashcards, watch videos specifically from the Khan Academy because I really thought that they helped, and did a lot of drawing when it came to the organic chemistry structures and reactions. Now I'm going to show you how all of these different parts kind of fit together into how I study. But first, just a very brief note on taking notes. The whole point on taking notes is to get you to understand the concepts presented to you inside the textbook. Now if you're already familiar with a concept presented to you, you don't need to spend a lot of time taking those notes over and over again. Instead, it's probably going to be a little bit more helpful just to move on to the practice questions. But on the other hand, if you're totally new to a topic, you do not want to rush the note-taking step in my opinion. Now I say this because ideally you only want to write the MCAT test once. If it takes you a little bit more time to make those notes because this is an unfamiliar concept to you, I would highly suggest that you take that little bit of time rather than have to double back and do it all over again next year. Okay, now for the plan. Start off by reading the chapter and make handwritten notes on the most important information or things that you don't already know. You're also going to want to be looking out for things like difficult sections that you're going to want to start and then also important formulas as you go through. And this is going to be especially important in the physics and chemistry and organic chemistry sections because these formulas pop up a lot. What you're going to want to do with them is keep a separate book aside from your handwritten notes that you're going to keep as a formula cheat sheet. So every time you come across a formula, you're going to write this down separately in your formula section uh, that you're going to keep on the side. Step number two is you're now going to go over your handwritten notes or however you made your notes with a highlighter and highlight the most important parts. Really give that second pass and make sure that you understand what you had written down in the first place. You're also going to be looking out for those difficult sections that you had starred and now you're going to go on the internet and look up videos on YouTube or the Khan Academy really make Making sure that you understand those more difficult sections. Step number three is that now you're going to answer practice questions. Now you could either do the practice questions that are in your study textbooks that you have, or you could be using things like question banks. Now it's very important that you actually do these practice questions right after you've taken your notes and you went back and highlighted and learned about the stuff originally. And this is really going to help to make sure that you've now learned the information and applied it. It all goes back to the active recall principle of learning. 
Step number four is that you're now gonna go and correct your answers. But when I say that, it's gonna be done in two parts. The first thing that you're gonna do is just see whether or not you got the answer right. You are not gonna look at the solutions. Out of all your answer choices, you either give a check mark or an X. At the very end, you're gonna now look at your section as a whole and see how you did. If you got greater than 80%, then I say, in my opinion, you are good to move on to the next section. But if you got less than 80%, then you're gonna have to go back to your notes, read them over again, make sure that you understood and maybe watch a few more videos and then go back to those exact same questions because again you haven't looked at the solutions you just know whether your answer was right or wrong and now you're gonna get a second chance to make sure that you understand it once you've gotten that 80% magic number on your question bank that you just did you are then going to go and follow along through the solutions just to make sure that you didn't get to that answer by chance you want to make sure that the way that you were solving the questions particularly this is important for physics and chemistry um, make sure that it's actually in line with the correct way to follow along for answering these questions. And finally, step five, if you guys remember back to my original study schedule for how I structured my studying for the MCAT, you're always going to want to leave one day during the week open for doing little accessory things like this. And this means making flashcards, uh, writing out definitions, helping you remember these little things is going to be very important specifically for this section here. Now I mean flashcards for the amino acids, for the enantiomers or stereoisomers, all of the different classifications for organic chemistry. Uh, and then even the formulas. I did these things on Saturday when I had uh, an additional day off and I kind of scheduled it all then. Now that was my study method for actually learning these concepts in the beginning, the knowledge review part of the actual MCAT study process. But then eventually, and what a lot of people will tell you, is that when you actually get into the practice tests and then correcting your practice tests, you learn a lot more from answering the problems themselves and then even going back over your mistakes and correcting your tests than you do from actually just learning the original material. But you can't get to that step unless you have a foundational understanding of all of these concepts, so the knowledge review is still incredibly important. Okay, so now moving Moving on to my five quick tips for how you can almost instantly improve your score on this section of the MCAT uh, because I don't want to keep you guys here all day. The very first tip is to know your formulas. No word of lie, on my actual MCAT test I had at least five marks come from the kinematics question, those big five that you learned back in high school. Make sure that you have those memorized and you know how to use them. They're some of the easiest uh, answers, points that you could get on the MCAT test. Now when it comes to actually memorizing the formulas, there are going to be some that you need to know memorized because they won't show up on the exam. There's also going to be some that you will see on the exam they'll give to you, um, but you're going to have to know how to use them. My advice here is to go ahead and take a look at the Princeton document that goes and highlights which formulas you need to have memorized and which you just need to know, but at least know how to use all of the formulas that you come across because it's very possible that they show up. My next tip is to know your MCAT math, and this means that the Earth's gravitational constant is 10 meters per second squared. It also means that you have to know things like how the units break down, so that knowing that a watt is a joule per second, know all of those different derivations of the actual scientific units, and then finally, be very comfortable with working with scientific notation. Practice things like doing uh, exponents um, and multiplication and the square root, all of these different things are really gonna help you when you're in a crunch on the MCAT. Tip number three is to know your organic chemistry super well. I know it only says that it accounts for 15% of your actual test, but in my experience, and I wrote the MCAT twice, there are disproportionately a lot of organic questions that have shown up, at least for me. And one of the things that I find a lot of students do in so far as what they've told me is that they haven't been very strong in organic chemistry in the past and they just are kind of hoping that a lot of those questions aren't going to show up. Do not adhere to that philosophy if you want to do well on this section of the MCAT because it won't work out. Tip number four, and this is actually when it comes to writing your MCAT test, is that when you have a long passage before some questions, my plan was to always go ahead and look at the questions first, see if I actually needed to use the information in that passage, or if it just would have been a waste of time for me to understand what was going on there. In a lot of cases, not all the time, but I found that you could go just to the questions and be able to see whether or not you could answer this with your own knowledge, just in what you have studied, or whether you have to actually go back and read the passage. Finally, my last tip, tip number five, is that practice questions are so important. I know I've already talked about this in the past, but I had to bring it up now for those of you that just skipped ahead because this is so important. When it comes to chemistry, physics, organic chemistry, the only thing that you can do at the end of the day is do these passages and these questions over and over again so that you're super familiar with how you go about solving it so that on actual test day when you're under pressure and there's the time constraints, you're almost just acting based off of muscle memory. 
Doing the practice questions over and over and over again is really gonna help you, in my opinion, to get that high score on this section of the MCAT. All right, guys, and that's gonna be the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you learned something here. I wish you all the best of luck on this section. I know it could be incredibly difficult. Once again, I have all of the resources that are free linked in the description below. Also, just a quick note about Anki cards because everyone's been asking me about them lately. I personally didn't use Anki cards for the MCAT test. I started using them here in medical school and they've been very helpful for me so far. My advice is if you're going to be using the Anki cards to study for the MCAT test, go on the forums, go on Reddit, see if you could find pre-made cards. A lot of students have told me that in the past we spent a lot of time making these cards, um, way more time than they should have when in reality you could just use someone else's deck and it's really going to help you just to memorize these topics if that's something that you wanted to do. All right guys, and other than that, if you have any more questions, just feel free to leave them in the comment section below. I will get around to them. Um, I hope everyone's having a great day wherever you are. Remember to work hard, study hard, have fun. See you all in the next one. Everyone take care.